Hi, I'm Sandy Baird, and we are here today with what's going on in the world today, and there's a lot going on as always. I'm here today with Eric Agnero, a colleague of mine and a colleague of this city and everything important that goes on <laughs> in this city. Eric is from the Ivory Coast. He's now becoming a lawyer here, and he's doing many other civic activities. Mm. Um, and there are two important events going on, and we'll start today with the Summit of on Africa that's being held in Washington. And before we go to a discussion of that, we will see a little video. So, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. African nations are in Washington, D.C. this week for a three-day Africa summit organized by the Biden administration. The U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit comes as the United States is trying to counter the growing influence of China and Russia in Africa. On Monday, Biden's national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, revealed the United States is pledging $55 billion in economic health and security support for Africa over the next three years. Working closely with Congress, the U.S. will commit $55 billion to Africa over the course of the next three years across a wide range of sectors to tackle the core challenges of our time. These commitments build on the United States' longstanding leadership and partnership in develop, development, economic growth, health and security in Africa over the past three decades. During the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit, President Biden is expected to express support for the African Union to join the G20 and to push for the United Nations Security Council to include a permanent member from Africa. Axios is also reporting Biden's planning his first trip as president to sub-Saharan Africa next year. The Washington summit comes as Africa faces numerous crises, from the climate emergency to political instability. Over the past two years, there have been coups in Mali, Sudan, Burkina Faso and Guinea. U.S. trained officers led several of those coups. The four nations were not invited to the Washington summit. Neither was Eritrea or leaders from Western Sahara, which has been occupied by Morocco since the 1970s. One prominent African leader who will not be attending this week's summit is South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, who faces possible impeachment over corruption allegations. The summit comes as the U.S. continues to expand its military presence in Africa. President Biden recently sent U.S. troops back into Somalia, reversing an order by Donald Trump to withdraw troops. So what's going on? Oh, well, you know— uh, more... What is this African summit? It's a gathering that, you know, Biden is organizing, President Biden is organizing in Washington. It's the second one after the first was uh, organized by uh, Obama. I think it's 2014. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this summit, as you know, the video was saying, comes um, because the U.S. is facing serious challenge in africa in, or everywhere everywhere in really everywhere right, you know, right, and everywhere right. but africa has become if you if you if you've seen it the epicenter of you know uh, almost like all these new uh, 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 geopolitics um, uh, confrontation between the west and you know uh, the uh, russia and china i would say between the west and the BRICS. which okay are, so what are the BRICS? The BRICS are, you know, Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, um, Russia, uh, China, India, India, and South Africa. Right. So these are the emerging powers that are challenging very much. So, you know, the uh, the domination of the Western world, meaning, you know, uh, domination of the capitalist world too, in a lot of ways, right? Yes, but today is no longer yeah, right. like a divide between mm -hmm. capitalism and because everybody seems to have found f found their way of doing free market, depending on you know your you know uh, your background. But what is more important is that these countries no longer will take di a dictatorship from the West, because you know after. Uh, like India, for example, used to be mm -hmm. a former colony from uh, Great Britain, but today India doesn't have any complex and would like uh, the British to, to, you know, to treat with them as, you know, uh, a, a, a power or at least a sovereign country. Mm -hmm. And India also has the means to uh, reclaim that because, like, it's one of the largest populated country, the economy is also booming. And it is? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's no longer a third world country, uh, you know, one-on-one. 
it's today, uh, you know, a, a, a power mm -hmm. that, you know, wants to be respected as such. And Russia also mm -hmm. wants, Russia is a nuclear power. And Russia doesn't want to be taken for <laughs> a third world country. You have Brazil, which is a yes. large economy. Right, right, and right. you have South Africa, which is also one of the largest mm -hmm. economies. And, and China, if not the largest economy of uh, Africa. So these countries also have the agenda. They want to do business across the continent. They want to do business across the world. So they're refusing what we call in French a chasse garde, a turf of you know these post-colonial power. I mean these colonial powers. For example, uh, the French-speaking countries in Africa uh, are still under the domination of Paris. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then... And so the French, I wonder if we could go yeah. back to the map, yeah. um, if that's possible. But the French countries are in French West Africa, correct, mostly? Yeah, some, some of them will come to, you know, really, uh, yeah, right. Central, you have Madagascar uh -huh. that have ties with France. And so from Dakar to Madagascar, you have like... A lot of countries that, that are, are French. French. And then in this region, in the West Africa region and Central Africa region, almost 14 plus countries share a currency that is being controlled by France, mm. meaning the economy, politics, everything is held by France. So uh, this is why in Africa we're seeing a revolution that if we don't pay attention will take away France and all the allies amongst them, the U.S., mm -hmm. the new generation. In other words, there be, there's competition for the control, not really for the control, but at least for the loyalties of those countries. There's, they're not so loyal to the old imperial powers, yes, right? Yes, and then uh, what appears as a way to, get, uh, to, to grant loyalty to another power is not what we think here. Mm -hmm. The U.S. and the Western world are always seeing it as a competition, not as a, a legitimate mm -hmm. a need and expression of sovereignty. It looks like you Africans cannot even choose <laughs> with whom you want to do. Right. If you choose our enemy, then you, you, you're choosing wrong. And under this pretext, they don't get it. They don't get that the new generations, the new, uh, I mean, the, the generation of internet, mm -hmm. those who went to school, no longer the colonial, you know, subjects that their parents were, want equality. Mm -hmm. Someone was telling me, can black lives matter only in the U.S. and not in Africa? How can we be in Africa still colonial beings and we have to deal with a power that is saying that black lives matter. Black lives matter only in, in America, not mm -hmm. in Africa and, or in the, in the black and brown world. You know, this is it. So instead of, you know, uh, uh, creating this big summit where the same people, the same leaders that are being challenged by the new generation there, that are being seen as, you know, just beggars, and lackeys of uh, the <coughs> post-colonial powers, instead of having them, this country should understand that there's a new paradigm over there. There's a new way of doing business. It's which is? Which is? I mean, wait a minute, can, can we go back? So this summit that's happening in Washington, yeah. what is the purpose of it? To the, give aid? What is it? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. You see that, you know, Africa is being, you know, uh, uh, um, approached by China and, and Russia and, uh, now, and they are and they are and then not not only approached but uh, Russia is one of the major you know uh, armed dealer they, and major they, right? uh, military assistant you know assistance power and also doing business with Mali Burkina Faso and all these countries you have China Russia is doing business yeah China is one of the major investors in, in, in Africa. China is building roads, China is building infrastructure, they're doing business over there. Do they do, do they arm those countries as well? China, China? not into the arm business, that is more the, uh, the, you know, the, the forte of Russia. Mm -hmm. But in any case, they're also looking for the influence over yeah. there, do business. Right, even, right. even India is doing business, even uh, Turkey is doing business over there. So they don't, and then the Africans, want to do business with everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
they want to do business with everybody. Mm -hmm. But you know, and but it's not possible. Why? Be because, as I said, a lot of them are still prisoners of a post-colonial system that prevent them to do uh, freely they move. So if they want to do that, they have to break away from France, for example. That's what Mali did. Mm -hmm. Mali did when? Recently? Recently, yeah. after a coup d'etat. Mali now is be <laughs> best buddies with Russia because Mali is looking for someone to protect them against you know, the retaliation of France. Mm -hmm. And the retaliation of France, uh, and, and uh, there have been a lot of articles and studies, and it's like, uh, uh, um, I mean, agitating all these uh, 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 criminals in the desert, these uh, mm -hmm. uh, so-called so terrorists, terrorists right, right, to, right. Put, to terrorize the countries over there so that they can turn to France to ask for help against these terrorists, mm -hmm. and then in return for this help, okay, France will dig into your soil and get all the gold over there and the minerals. Mm -hmm. So it's a new dawn. It's a new paradigm, which is not going to be about these summits only, mm -hmm. but also uh, creating avenues of people-to-people -people business. Cultural. The U.S. is like one of the... Used to be. I mean, it's still, you know, just a movie comes out of uh, uh, the, the U.S., just like a, a, a new uh, economic, you know, theory or whatever comes out of the U.S. and already, you know, the world want to, uh, to, you know, take advantage of it. The U.S. is still a big soft, has a big soft power. Which means cultural. Cultural, that mm. can be used. You know, how can you expect a generation that have read all your books... Mm -hmm. to accept that you come as a lesson giver. Mm -hmm. You know, when they know that you're best friend with France, you are best friend with England, you are best friend with the European Belgium. Union, you know, Belgium. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, well, it's almost an oxymoron. For yeah, a, a, yeah. I mean, there's so many Americans, I believe, that don't know a thing about history and are really unaware a lot of uh, the colonial past in Africa. Mm -hmm. They might know, Americans might know that the West, England and France and the United States were associated with the slave trade. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, I don't think that many Americans know about the whole history of those powers in Africa after slavery, that yeah. colonialism. Colonialism right. and post-colonialism, right. because the main, the main... And that means the control of Africa by Western powers for their resources, largely, right? They see right? flags, they see yeah. African nations playing at the World Cup and yeah. thinking that these are real nations, right. these right. are, are right. real countries and right. different countries. Here we are, okay. It's, it's, it's not true. Well, what is true? What is true is Africa not only is still dominated by the colonial powers of France, of and England. France, England, England US. somehow through yep. you know, uh, but you the U.S. is an ally of these. The U.S. Right. so as as to maintain this uh, di uh, division of Africa that took place at the Berlin Conference, that and then Yalta, the division of the world where you know superpowers you know uh, kind of share the cake. Okay, this is my turf. This mm -hmm, is your mm -hmm, turf. Mm -hmm. So if uh, if I won't go to your turf, I will back you there mm -hmm. as long as you back me there. I, I help you uh, knock down China if you help me get, knock you know, down Russia. <laughs> Russia, you right. know. So, uh, but that's unfortunately what's happening with Africa. And Africa is still being seen by the, uh, uh, the people of the Western world as an infant mm -hmm. that is only looking for food clothing, and medications. And then under this pretext of, you know, health assistance, all these kind of uh, experiments, yeah. and, uh, dumping of drugs and, and all kind of uh, uh, chemical to Africa is taking place. They didn't place. want it though, right? Yeah, so when the uh, civil society went, wants to topple down these dictators, these lackeys, that are holding the country back, then come these powers to house that. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's impossible. It's impossible for that continent to be 
successful if all its resources are taken away to Europe. For example, Niger. Niger Point produce, out where it is. Niger, Niger is here. And that's also French that's, speaking. Yeah, French right? speaking. Niger right. produce, produces uranium. Mm -hmm. But Niger doesn't even have power. None. All, ugh, like, it's only like the capital city and, you know, most of the country doesn't have access to, you know, cheap power. They produce uranium. All this uranium goes to France, mm -hmm. produces electricity for France. Mm -hmm. When the Ni people Is that from Niger. Nuclear? Stuff? Nuclear. Right. You got like Ivory Coast produces like the largest quantity of, you know, cacao for chocolate. Mm -hmm. This chocolate goes to, to be, you know, uh, roasted and, you know, uh, and, and, and become, you know, a chocolate and comes back three times the price or maybe ten times the price mm -hmm. of, you know, the raw material. And these countries are still, you know, imposed to produce raw materials mm -hmm. and ship them. You have... Uh, but that's the same in the English colonies as well or not? I mean, the, Engli the English colonies, you know, are maybe less uh, 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 tortured <laughs> by England point, than, yeah. you know, at this point. But it's the same, it's the same, it's the same scheme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's not militarism, then comes the IMF and the World Bank. Mm -hmm. And what do they do? They impose, you know, all kinds of programs. Right. For example, austerity. Uh, austerity. Mm -hmm to pay back credit cards that have been flooded into the country by, uh, by uh, you City know. Bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at the end, it's, you can't go anywhere. You still be Africa and then, so now the U.S. is changing maybe. I mean, so what is this summit then for? To sort of court the African countries or what? Yes, to court them. Right. But a it comes also from, with a stake. Right. Yeah, which is because right before this summit, there was a law passed, and I mean, how do you call it? But you know, basically a law passed by Congress or you know a bill saying that all countries, all individuals that will be helping China's or I mean Russia's malign influence, mm -hmm. malign influence, <laughs> influence in Africa mm -hmm. will be punished. Mm -hmm. So like it's like still. A friend from Africa told me. Baba Biden and the 49 robbers. Yeah. It's th that's yeah. how they see it. Mm -hmm. You know, 49, Ill most of them illegitimate, Ill you mm -hmm. know, that are not legitimate, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 leaders are in Washington to be caught so that they can maybe, you know, uh, uh, help with, you know, uh, 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 with regard to uh, containing the influence of China. Not everybody wants China to be the mm -hmm. dominating me. I don't want it. No, I don't, I don't want you know, Africa to go under, again, I mean, any other uh, power. Mm -hmm. What I, I wish for Africa is that you know, they can do business equally with the rest of the world. But mm -hmm. uh, maybe one has to be very, you know, uh, 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 um, how do you say it? Uh, um, Circumspect. <laughs> First of all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's good that a summit like this happened, but it's like a, a competition because the same summit happened in Sochi in, in Russia. Uh -huh. There's also a summit China-Africa. There's also maybe a summit India-Africa. So Africans' leaders are like beggars that go from summit to summit where they're being given champagne and mm -hmm. you know, all this uh, nice gift and maybe... Uh, uh, um, some uh, some stipends uh -huh. to attend this summit. We blah blah, and then at the end, it's like uh, you know who will give more to this power, but less to the people. So what happens at the end? I mean, so do these African leaders? First of all, are they legit leaders? Or Most what's of the them deal? are not. Are not. What do you mean? I take the example of the president of the Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. He's serving a third illegal mandate that have been, you know, uh, 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 condoned by France, mm -hmm. the European Union, and the U.S. Mm -hmm. So it, Was he put into power by those countries? I mean, it was like after a post-electoral stalemate, stalemate, which had like the Western powers weighing very much for him to be in power. Mm -hmm. Okay, he got two terms, 
And after the two terms, he comes and then says he's going to do a third term mm -hmm. because the, uh, uh, his successor that he has designated has died. Mm -hmm. So I need to be there because my successor died. Like if there were nobody in this country right. to uh, take over. Mm -hmm. But this guy is still, how can he be at a conference like this? Okay, the Chinese are not asking anything <laughs> yeah. when it comes to uh, human rights or whatever. Okay, so be it. Then uh, let's go do business equal to equal. Mm -hmm. this, and this is what this leader says too? Uh, these leaders, yeah. they don't have a say. Yeah. Most of them are over there just because they're protected by uh, the U.S by at least the West, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I don't put the U.S. as the major, most of them, the U Africa is not the turf of the U.S., so to speak. The at US, this point. At this point. Yeah. The U.S. is there as an ally of these France. France and, you know, but also the U.S. is there also to, you know, kind get of. There, get a foot in the door. Yeah, but still, i rather have the U.S. play its own cards in mm -hmm. Africa rather than being an ally of people that have created hundreds of years or, or at least at least uh, dozens of years of you know resentment from mm -hmm. the, the you know mm -hmm. the africans mm -hmm. remember a few years ago uh, 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 i mean a f uh, less than a century ago or maybe a century ago uh, people were having their their, hands, their cut. hand cuts in congo mm -hmm. that was by the belgians by right. the belgians mm -hmm. Lumumba's tooth, one of the, the prime minister of Congo's, like Patrice, he, Patrice Lumumba, mm -hmm. tooth was given back to Congo like you give like uh, the, the tail of an animal. Because he was assassinated. He was assassinated. Mm -hmm. And his tooth was being kept by, you know, one of the, the guys. Like identification? Were, yeah. No, no, but, just? you know, it was like a trophy, like mm -hmm. a, a souvenir mm -hmm. by, you know, mm -hmm. the one who, you know, assassinated him mm -hmm. on behalf of, you know, the Western world. Mm -hmm. So... How can you, you know, if you don't do at least that, <laughs> you don't do at least penance, if you don't <laughs> at least, you know, repair that. Mm -hmm. It's almost an oxymoron to try to become, you know, a helper when you help those who are still, you know. Well, but that's not changing, right? It's not changing. Mm -hmm. And that patronizing attitude. Mm -hmm. But so if a government comes into power even if it's a free election, uh -huh. that is more friendly with Russia or China. What does the United States do? And France. Ah, they, they will they put pressure on, on this because there's competition. Right, there's and competition. the competition is about what? About resources? It's about resources, but also it's about, you know, you know influence. It's about, you know, uh, pride. It's about uh -huh. also, you know, everything, you know. Uh, it's about everything, and 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 and, and, and even you see that at the World Cup to say yeah, right. to, <laughs> to, to the, the last World you know Cup. to the yeah, World right, Cup because right, we have right, just right. a few minutes to uh, talk about it. You see that which is tomorrow at two o'clock. You have Morocco, Morocco, and again. versus France. Okay, so, so no, most Americans don't know the deal. Yeah, yeah. Morocco is a former colony of yeah, France, uh -huh. right? Yeah, and so for for the people from Morocco, it's kind of. Uh, people of the world from op Africa. Yeah, opportunity to uh, take their revenge. To take right. <laughs> the revenge, you know. Right. You yes. know, against, and then this is what is at play. And then just also to show that we are nations now, you know, all part of the world that we have to respect each other. So no nation, even if these nations are uh, 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 midget, like in terms of economy, Morocco, military. It's small. Yeah, to, to, I mean, compared to France. Mm -hmm. But they're still people. Mm -hmm. They still have pride. Mm -hmm. They still are, you know, a nation. And and then so uh, who uh, do you want to, <laughs> to do win? You I mean, look at I'm a French from Quebec, uh -huh. so I would probably favor the colonies. Yeah, of but France it's interesting because Morocco is the first African country, right, exactly. First Arab country because right. Mo Morocco is dual Arab. I know. And, and therefore Islamic mostly, yeah. right? So, so it's like for the Arab world, it's the first country that is going at this stage of the competition. And for the African, you know, continent, it's also one of theirs. So Af that is going to at this stage. So it's really the whole interesting. continent is behind them. The whole uh, uh, black and brown world is behind yes, them. Yes, right. But I don't know God. in this country, though. What do you but thank God it's, oh, this country have plenty, a lot of 
friends from here that are for Morocco because it's a tour de force. They did something very incredible. Which was? Which was going all the way to that, you know, uh, stage. So they... The first African, they, first yeah, Arab country. Yeah, they gained respect from, you know, the, the U. And then they, you know, they were able also to, to beat some of these powers that, you like know, what? That, that also uh, put, like, the American teams in trouble. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. yes. But uh, that's what we want. Thank God it's not like true uh, a conflict, military conflict. It's yeah, I'd rather have a soccer football, match, soccer wouldn't you? Match, right. You know? mm -hmm. That's what the world should be rather than, you know, oh, I dominate you because you're black or brown, or I dominate you because you're white or yellow. It's like... I dominate you, you basically because you've got gold. Uh, yeah. Or because you've yeah. got coltan. Or because you help me uh, right. fight the Russian, right. I help you fight the, uh, the, the Chechens, mm -hmm. and so to speak. So, uh, uh, so I, I, I like that idea of the summit in Washington. I hope that, you know... Uh, what did Trump... Trump didn't have such a thing, right? Trump was clear from the beginning. Trump wanted only America. And even you would be, you would be surprised. In Africa, people used to like Trump. I know. Because I know. at least he was not coming to mingle in our people. I mean, people... Mess with your people. people like, right. okay, uh, these are... Whatever whole <laughs> countries, I don't get there. This is your business. But because the U.S., for example, is uh, pledging $55 billion mm -hmm. for Africa. But for what? I don't know. I'm going to ask you. For a bunch of beggars or to really... Or for businesses for or business? what? What is it for? I mean, it's for security. When you In talk other about words, is that the military? Military. Oh. It's also for uh, climate change. What does that mean? I mean, it's like maybe we'll help you fight climate change. But uh, Africa needs more than that. Africa needs to have access to education, access to democracy, the rule of law. And most of the systems over there are not in favor of that. So no matter how much money you pour in, this, in these countries in Africa, you won't, you won't have <laughs> a good result. Like, it's like the same way we're pouring money into Ukraine, you know, uh, where this money goes. God knows. I Nobody know. knows. Nobody knows. I mean, I hope he helps. Goes into guns. I hope he helps. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we need to, uh, to redefine, you know, our relationship as countries around the world. We need to be tough together. Not only one country, uh, uh, you know, um, you know uh, uh, that wants the other countries to walk uh, in such manner. Mm -hmm. No, we all have to sit down. You know, the U.S. also is pledging to give to Africa a seat at the G20 summit, which yeah. is the 20 yeah, uh, most, most important economic yeah. economies in the world. Right. But Africa is there for what? As a prosperous economy or just a beggar? Well, you tell me. You As tell a beggar. us. Yeah. Because to be there, you have to, you have to earn that. Mm -hmm. So, again, we want, like, the African Union to have a seat there or to have, like, uh, African countries have a seat at the uh, 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 Security Council. Mm -hmm. How about, you know, uh, 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 dismantling the Security Council and make it, making it a general, a general assembly? I know. Mm -hmm. So Africa will be there just for just that uh, strapotin, that uh, little uh, stool. Brother. Yeah. You get sit then, and then you say yes to everything. Yes. Well, you no, know, you don't say yes to Russia and China. Yeah. <laughs> only, only to the West. So right? the new generation in Africa doesn't want that. And they all want Morocco to win. They want Morocco to win. <laughs> right. But I like the team of France. They're very good, though. And they're, they're the incumbent. And they're the same champion. people. Yeah, they're the same. If you look at the. Let's the, look the, at those pictures. <laughs> If you, yeah, if you look at the, the team of Morocco and that of France, it's, you, the same. it's the, almost the same. Right, because France now has a lot of black and brown people within yeah. France, yeah, right? Yeah. We call even, you know, uh, the team of France, like it's like the same way they had like uh, these, uh, these uh, 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 soldiers from Africa who went to uh, fight the World War II. <laughs> What, what, uh, yeah, right, the, right, 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 right. On behalf yeah, of, of France. Of France right. you know, or so on the, behalf of, of uh, uh, Britain. Britain. Right. So, In World War yeah. One. It's unfortunate. Yeah. But anyway, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. But we will have to be back and talk about the results. Yeah. Correct?
So Especially at the soccer match. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. And then we'll see what you know this right. uh, what summit in Washington. Summit as well. Yeah. Right. Will uh, give birth to. It's about time though that the U.S. is paying attention, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, I mean, me, I would like the U.S. to use one of their best resources. Culture. Culture. Mm -hmm. And the. African, the new Africa, the new Americans from Africa that are here, thriving, that could be the new economic ambassadors. Like you? To Africa. Yes, why not? Okay. All right. See you later. Thank you.